Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at coupled oscillators and normal modes. So today, um, so recently I've been learning a little bit about these, so I just wanted to share what I've learned with you guys basically. And yeah, the problem is two identical springs and two identical masses are attached to a wall are attached to a wall as shown. Find the normal modes and show that frequencies can be rewritten can be written as root k over m times root five plus or minus one divided by two golden ratio and its inverse okay so this is a pretty straightforward problem but it introduces the idea of normal modes it's a pretty simple looking setup but obviously even if you just add one more spring the motion get, can get really complicated because like if you displace this mass it's suddenly going to start oscillating and like transfer the energy and this one's going to start oscillating and it's going to oops my bad but it's going to basically keep on um, transferring energy to each of each other and it gets kind of complicated even with just two but we can analyze normal modes normal modes are basically when both the masses are oscillating at the same frequency and phase and by phase it could still be like um, pi shifted that means like the amplitude is just negative and that's kind of how it's treated and once you get the normal modes all the oscillation is just a linear combination of the two so if we set this one to move to the distance this is moved as x1 and the distance this is moved as x2 we can solve for some of the we can write the equations of motion that is so let's write it for this one first and we have m x1 double dot so the acceleration is equal to we're ignoring gravity here so if it goes x1 here the string force is going to be minus kx1 right and then the spring force from this one is going to be minus kx1 since it's going to be compressing it but it's also going to be but it's also going to be my um plus x sub 2 well it's going to be plus x sub 2 which makes it minus since we're putting it in parentheses and it's plus because once this one stretches out it wants to bring this one this way which is in the direction of x1 so that's our equation of motion for x1 and our equation of motion for x2 is mx2 double dot is equal to well all it is is just going to be this one but negated right because if yeah because it's going to be pulling when x2 is positive so it's going to be minus k times x2 minus x1 so from here it's we can solve but a trick we use here is to write this in matrix form because matrices make things much more straightforward I'm sure you guys didn't need to see the problem anymore, but matrices matrices make things really straightforward and it looks almost like a, just a linear equation, right? So we can write the matrix like this, m m zero zero times x one double dot and x two double dot is equal to well first let's rewrite these so that they're in terms of x two and x one. So this is plus k times x one minus k times x two. And this is equal to minus 2kx1 plus kx2. So if we just write this in matrix format, it's going to be minus 2k, k, k minus k times x1, x2. And all we did here is just convert these two equations into this. We didn't do any physics here. It's just, it's just a conversion of what it looks like. So now we need to find solutions for x1 and x2. So what we're going to do is we're going to guess a solution so our guess is going to be guess it's going to be x1 x2 is equal to e to the minus i omega t this is the angular frequency and we have to find that times a matrix a1 a2 which refers to their amplitudes and we're going to write this we're just going to call this a this matrix A. And from here, let's input this information into here. First first off, x1 double dot, x2 double dot is just going to be looking at this equation here. If we take the second derivative of this one, it's, going, it's just going to be this value because of how E differentiates, except with I omega multiplied, well, negative I omega, but that doesn't really matter, minus I omega squared down here, which is going to be minus omega squared because I squared is negative. 
And if you wanted to know a little bit more motivation for each the I, negative i omega t is because it's, it's a circle in the complex plane and projecting that onto a real plane gives you a cosine graph. So we have m, 0, 0, m times negative omega squared times, oh, we said we just, we'll write it out because it'll make some things cancel, times a is equal to minus 2k, k, k minus k times e to the minus i omega t times a. So here we can cancel just constant factors, and since we're working with matrices, we can't exactly cancel the a's. And now, before we move things over, we're going to multiply by the inverse um, matrix of this, because it actually, it's just pretty standard to do that. I don't think it really matters, but everybody just does that. So we're gonna, we can write it's equal to 1 over m, 0, 0, 1 over m. Sorry, it's very squished. And we can move this over, factor out the a, and that should give us, well, let's multiply this out first. It's going to be minus 2k over m times k over m. And then it's going to be k over m times minus k over m times, um, and then we're going to have, we're going to have plus omega squared, 0, 0, omega squared, times a. And the reason we get this is because when we factor out the a, we still need to have an, a matrix here to get that addition correct. And so we get the identity matrix is what we get. And it turns out the general solution, the general solution to this is going to be when the determinant of the added matrix is 0. So let's find the determinant of this. And that's going to be omega squared minus 2k over m times omega squared minus k over m is equal to k squared over m squared. And now let's just rearrange this or expand it. It's going to be omega to the 4 minus 3k over m omega squared plus k squared over m squared is equal to 0. And by the quadratic formula, this gives omega squared is equal to, well, let's factor out the k over m times 3 plus or minus square root, uh, 3 squared is 9, minus 4ac is 4 over 2. So this, we, got, we already got the angular frequency here. And well, in the problem, in the problem, it basically asks us to show what the what the frequencies were and we already have that here we have omega squared and you can easily check that this is in fact equal to root 5 minus 1 over 2 squared or root 5 plus 1 squared 1 over 2 squared sorry that was out of frame and now all we need to do to solve for the normal modes here is plug plug these values back in into the matrix here and then figure out what the determinant what a needs to be and that's a bit boring and it's pretty routine and it basically just gives if omega is equal to root 5 plus 1 over 2 solving just gives a1 equals I believe I think it should be negative 2 and then root 5 plus 1 um, and yeah sorry no it's negative 2 and root 5 minus 1 a2 equals root 5 minus 1 and then the other one is going to be a1 equals root 5 plus 1 and a2 equals negative 2 I believe and that's root 5 minus 1 over 2 and it should give those values I mean, well, it's already, it should already be astounding that the frequencies are these golden ratios, which is pretty cool, and it's a plus two. And well, actually, maybe I should have gone over the computation, but it's literally just plugging it in and finding the ratio, and you don't even have to multiply 
both of these, you can just multiply the matrix on the top row and it'll give you the right answer because you just set it to zero. And so this gives us that our normal modes are x1, x2 is equal to the two values of a1, a2 times cosine the two values of omega t plus some phase constant. And those are our normal modes. And that's going to be it for this pretty short video. Thanks for watching.